Ladies and gentlemen, this is officially my last day at work. All of these uh, big deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. I sure hope I have. Renowned sports commentator Shannon Sharp has lately been in the news for his accomplishments in the industry and for grave accusations. Influential Hollywood people have threatened and scrutinized him unprecedentedly after his high-profile interview with Cat Williams Sharp. Today, we explore the circumstances surrounding Shannon Sharp's career, the dangers he faces from Hollywood's elite, and the more enormous ramifications of this developing drama. Sharp's recent experiences have sparked a great deal of controversy. A pivotal moment in Sharp's career occurred. Uh, Club Shay Shay after this year. <laughs> it's gonna be in a dimension that's never. When, when Cat drop, right. it's like all of a sudden he gay now. That nigga called me trying to do an interview. I said, No, Medea, I ain't doing no interview. <laughs> so you can sit across from me and look at my balls. I'll sit down. Nigga. During his interview with Cat Williams. The open dialogue, which Ed Sharp's recent interview, which touched on delicate topics, thrust him into the spotlight, but also made him a target. Since then, Sharp has faced further scrutiny and threats. But what precisely caused this backlash? Shannon spoke with Cam Newton about the turmoil he's been going through since Cat Williams' interview went viral earlier this year and explained why celebs feel at ease enough. Shannon said on his podcast that to keep their secrets private, he always lets his famous guests know they are not obligated to address a particular subject, which helps them feel comfortable enough to share their stories. He said that he thinks it's feasible to tell a tale without- <laughs> Oprah coming next. <laughs> <laughs> Once I establish this as a place of truth, you don't do sit downs, you see what I'm saying? Kim, I've been trying to line Cat up for a year. Mm. I tried to line him up for a year. People don't know this, but Cat doesn't like to fly. Mentioning anything unpleasant. But he also feels that someone who has worked in the field for an extended period, say 10 years, should. For those who may not be familiar with him, Shannon clarified in a recent interview that he has never considered himself a journalist even though he understands that if someone chooses to avoid such tales, it is not his place to stop them from sharing. Shannon also addressed criticism that he is not a real journalist. Shannon, a former NFL player with great success, was, in 2020, during the pandemic, Shannon launched the podcast Club Shay. Although the podcast initially had a modest following, its popularity skyrocketed with the Cat Williams interview, which has received over 70 million views and is currently the most watched episode on the platform. Interestingly, Shannon revealed that this interview nearly didn't happen after being inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2011. Before things eventually worked out, he had been attempting to get Cat on the podcast for nearly a year. He then ran into Kat's new manager, who put him in touch with Kat. A week later, Kat went to Club Shay and revealed a number of business secrets. Kat Williams made it clear in the interview that he was well aware of how his revelations would affect the business and that his predictions of how it would respond were accurate. As Shannon celebrated Club Shay's success, he became aware of some in the industry who were unhappy and trying to damage his podcast. The whole story revolves around certain celebrities who were offended by Shannon's achievements and accused him and Club Shay of inciting controversy in Hollywood because of the Cat Williams interview. There are 30,000 new screenplays in Hollywood each year. And going on to Cedric the Entertainer, one of them requested for a black rural bumpkin who couldn't speak well and looked like Mr. Potato Head. There aren't any of them. Williams called him a walrus and accused him of stealing jokes. Williams described a particular instance, pointing out that it doesn't match what I did on TV in 2018. 
Williams called Smiley a liar for saying that on Friday, he was supposed to play the money mech. Following next, a part Williams played, he. Detailed Steve added that Ricky Smiley would encourage anybody to go over there to see precisely what's occurring, which is why he continued to show up at all of my auditions. The topic then shifted to Diddy, whom Williams claimed was trying to get him into circumstances that would compromise his integrity. Williams said, you have to tell him no. He likes to party, so you protect my integrity and that pure soul I mentioned. Furthermore, if I look at it, I understand how Diddy feels, implying that in some situations, Diddy claims ownership over others. Williams then shifted his attention to Kevin Hart, suggesting in his quick rise in Hollywood that Hart may be an industry plant. Williams said that no one in his 15 years in Hollywood could remember ever seeing a sold out Kevin Hart event. Have we ever heard of a comic who came to Los Angeles and shot to fame? In his first year in Los Angeles, Kevin Hart landed a network television show and was featured in the movie Soul Plane. His quick rise to fame is unheard of, and the news of Jonathan Major's recent passing was also discussed. Williams conjectured Major's troubles, implying that they may be a component of a more extensive plot. Perhaps I'm a conspiracy theorist, but I think that when they raise you to a certain point, there's an unwritten contract that says that they may undermine you at any point. Williams said everyone must be lovely if this ugly person is considered gorgeous. Williams also made a shocking claim, saying that absurdity was a part of the Illuminati's decision-making process. He claimed that there was a time when we were both invited to an illuminated gathering and that one of us had to make the decision. In response, absurd. Freestyle rap responds to the accusations and upholds his reputation ridiculously. I only left with BS when coming from any party. Is there a deliberate effort to undermine Sharp because of his candid views and the contentious topics he covers in his interviews? It appears likely, given the many rumors that have started to circulate about the show host, including the claim that the TV personality is gay, and that a few months ago, Sharp and comedian Mike EPS got into an argument over remarks EPS made about Sharp's sex. In February, social media revealed footage of Sharp performing at a comedy show, in which the comedian implied that Sharp is gay and said he turned down the former NFL star's offer to appear on his Club Shea podcast. The Club Shea podcast from Sharp is well known for its unfiltered truth-telling has yet to go over well since he hosted two widely shared interviews with Cat Williams and Monique, in which the stars talked openly about the business. A few comedians have mocked Sharp for being too popular and for thinking that gay jokes are out of date. Recently, Griffin made fun of Sharp's podcast and renamed it Club Gay during a comedy set. Sharp's fans have taken offense, but I think that his success has made his alleged peers quite envious. In March, Corey Hall, a comedian who appears to be convinced that Sharp is gay, gave a frantic five-minute performance on the 5150 show. Hall also aimed at Shannon Sharp, speculating that the host of the show had implied that Sharp was trapped in gay tricks. Hulk has already chastised Sharp for hosting club. Sheshe Hulk doesn't seem to be the only one who has claimed that Sharp is secretly gay. Antonio Brown, who attacked the Hall of Famer for criticizing Lamar Jackson, compared Shannon Sharp to a rainbow. This time on social media, the former NFL wide receiver sparked controversy again screaming fit after a widely shared TikTok video promoting Sharp's seaport, Brown accused Sharp of hiding his accentation. KAC is shaky despite Sharp's. Dedicated to paying tribute to his grandma via the brand, Brown's irrational remarks overshadowed the occasion and raised concerns about his intentions. Complete wine at our last visit of the day, Brown told me we had a late night and an early morning. We don't make excuses here. We work hard because we signed up for this.
This event adds to Brown's already controversial past, which includes claims that he used steroids against NFL players like J.J. Watt and Julian Edelman. In any case, in addition to personal jabs at former teammate Tom Brady, Shannon Sharp's allegations have significantly impacted his professional and personal lives. He disclosed that being called gay has had a profound effect on him and that it has an impact when people persistently doubt a straight man. He also mentioned that social media is so powerful that in 2016, someone could reach the White House by repeatedly repeating things, and people began to believe it. While there is nothing wrong with being homosexual, being accused of being secretly gay in today's society, as some claim Diddy is, may be quite detrimental. The idea that someone is trying to be straight can drastically damage one's image. The case of Diddy serves as an example of how these charges may be used as a weapon to do serious harm. In general, the big guy Shannon Sharp has been under severe scrutiny, particularly in light of the continuous rumors concerning his. Fans appear grateful for Shannon Sharp's courage in calling out these elites, regardless of how long he lives. One wrote, I hope Shannon Sharp tells the truth and shames the devil. Go Shannon Sharp, only God. Another said, if there is no truth to anything Cat Williams or any other guest has said on his podcast, then these celebrities would just brush it off. They wouldn't be threatening him. When it stings and people get defensive, it's because they've been called out. Out on their BS, thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next video.